take us through the start list. Well, here we are, there's the Ethiopian team. There's the start list of this 15 lap race. Qatar, Australia, Kenya, Poland, Spain. Ethiopia, a late comer in this event. And then the United States, the other good team in lane seven. Fascinating race, this it really is. Whether the Kenyans are going to go all out for that world record, a bonus of $50,000 also will be very nicely received by their team. Yeah, we met him there. One of the strong runners there for the uh, Ethiopian team. World indoor bronze at 1,500 meters. There we just said Chen Boy. Gregson, 331, his best, but I don't know whether he's in natural to shape the Australian. And now Gurney on the inside there for Qatar. Three and three quarter laps, each of these men have got to run. It's tough running it on your own. But this first leg is almost a race. Well, they're off, and at the moment it looks as if it's a bit of a scrabble for who goes in front. Well it, well, it will indeed, Steve, be very interesting to see the tactics. They've gone off, at, it seems, at a reasonable pace, but certainly not the sort of blistering ones we've seen from uh, some of the Kenyans in the uh, other races. But, of course, Chemo is a rather more experienced runner than we had in those uh, 800 meter races. Algani of Kato, a good, consistent runner for them. Gregson, the Australian that you mentioned, just in fifth place, just been overtaken by the Ethiopian first leg runner, Mekon and Gebri Median. And Gebri Median, possibly the best of all the runners in this first race, world indoor bronze medalist back in 2012. And again, a good consistent runner. But of course, this is rather different from some of the races that the athletes are used to, as Mekon and Gebri Median does indeed uh, go further. They're used to running pace races in the Grand Prix meeting, so this is rather different. But a reasonable opening lap there. Well, it's uh, probably not as fast as we were expecting, but Gebri Medium's decided he doesn't really want to go this sort of pace, and as you said, he's a star runner, and he's decided to take it on. Chen Boy now having to relinquish the lead. Well, I think the fact that the Ethiopians have made it changes the dynamic of this race. They don't have the same strength and depth as the Kenyans, because the Kenyan quartet, the slowest of them, is James Maggot who goes on the third leg with a with a not too shabby PB of 333. But certainly the fact that the Ethiopians are here, as we're seeing at the moment, could change the dynamic of the early stages of this race. Not only could, I think it will throughout. I mean, the, their worst runner is 334, man. And they've got uh, Wote on the last leg, who really is in terrific form this year. So Gabriel Median leading it out for the Ethiopians here. Well, hence, I think, a little bit of reluctance by Chen Boy to go too hard, and he doesn't want to take Gabriel Median through at a respectable pace. I think they're just now maybe it's just dissolving into a tactical battle between Ethiopia and Kenya, which we've seen so many times in the past. The Americans fill up their well with Kata, both in dark vests. Algani of uh, Kata and uh, Patrick Casey of the United States, third in the NCAAs last year. I think this is his international debut as well. He's obviously giving a good showing for himself. He's just tucked in there at the moment in third place. Gregson this time holding on to them at the moment for the Australians. So the six teams together with just the uh, poles really at the back of the affairs at the moment. So Gebri Medin's been prepared to take up the running pretty early on in this race. And Cheboy just holding on at the moment. Now just ranging up under his shoulder. Looks like he's going to burst through. Yes, Cheboy is now taking it up for Kenya. For the Americans, Casey just behind him. But Gabriel Medin is trying to hold him off as they come up now. And it's, it is indeed pretty quick. It's speeded up. 2.57 there. Yeah, Gabriel Medin is putting the pace on there. Just did not want to relinquish that lead there. Cheboy has uh, jostled a little bit. And at uh, the moment, you see Cheboy and... Uh, <laughs> He's trying his best to go past Gabri Medin. Gabri Medin is going to attack again. He doesn't like it. This is a good race. And because of that, they are speeding up, which is very important if we're looking at a world record. Casey, though, the United States also making a move on the outside here. Well, the Americans will not be put down, will they? Splendid run by Casey. They're coming up, of course, now to the first changeover just on the bend here. And uh, it's been a reasonable first lap here. It's around 337-ish. That's not bad at all. They're under world record by three seconds. Under world record by three seconds. And Kenya pick up the lead once again. Storming in front for the East African nation is Silas Kiplagat. But look at the effort being put forth by Ceresa Fida. 
Well, he's having to do that. It was a terrible changeover for the Ethiopians. They're not used to having the baton in their hand, I don't think. And he lost almost 20 meters or so. So coming into the back straight, still four main contenders. Silas Kiplagat, though, comfortable and in control, leading out these athletes, being closely pursued by David Torrance, former US Indoor 3000 meter champion, on his heels and on his shoulders as they come around to complete 400 meters for this leg. And bear in mind, Silas Kiplagat is one of only two men to have gone under 330 this season in Doha. He's got the credentials of a world silver medal in Daegu, and we know he is lightning quick. And this is a very quick first lap there. I think it's around 55, 56. Well, they're starting it, getting into the, the real top strata of middle distance running here. And because of that, these three are pulling well away. Pulling well away from the rest of the field. It is Kiplagat, Torrance, and Fida. Fida, only 19 years of age. World Junior Championships went out in the heats in 2010. Third as an African junior a year later. He finished seventh in the African Games. But of course, as Steve's already pointed out, the battle between Ethiopia and Kenya is a tradition and a rivalry that runs so long and so rich and so deep that they often perform beyond their abilities and beyond their credentials. Kip we got now being shadowed closely by Torrance and Fida hanging tough with the two of them. Well, Torrance is doing well, he really is. He's a 333 man, so he's a caliber man. And he's just, you can see his eyes are locked on. Kip the gap just in front of him. He's looking up at the scoreboard, checking where everybody is, so he's in good shape. He's not actually dying. Torrance could hang on here. This would be a good run from him at this sort of pace. Now the gap between Ethiopia and the lead two just opening up a little bit. Feeder was trying to hang on to the coattails of Torrance and Kiplagat, but now just being left in their wake as Kiplagat, the reigning Commonwealth Games champion from Delhi four years ago, just begins to put the hammer down, looking up at the big screen when he has the opportunity. World Championship silver medalist from Daegu as well. But Torrance with him, stride for stride, really impressive running from the former US indoor champion at 3,000 meters. It's great stuff from the North American, and it's really important for other middle and long distance running nations not to be intimidated by the likes of the Ethiopians and the Kenyans, because if you train hard enough and you are on top of your game, there's no reason why you can't be in the mix. This is great stuff from the American. Well, he's hanging tough now. Kiplagat is still starting to charge. The gap is opening up two or three meters. And you can see, really, Torrance's arms are starting to slide and go out a bit more. He's grimacing, he's losing all sorts of form as Kiplagat just keeps piling this pressure on and on and on. Well, all of a sudden, it looks as though David Torrance is running in treacle. His form has absolutely deserted him as we come up to the change. From the second athlete to the third, Torrance fighting for all his worth, but Kiplagat away and clear. Ethiopia with an awful lot to do. And it's James Maggot heading out onto the third leg for the Kenyans. They are on world record pace. Well inside, 7, 10, 19 at 3,000 metres. Well inside. Fantastic effort from the American Torrance to hang on. And it's Will Lear on the third leg for them. He did make the final of the world indoors in Sopot. He's got a short stride for a big man, Will Lear. He's in second place, and it's Alameu, fourth in the world youth a few years ago, who's going to try and track him down and close in on second place. But that camera angle there gives you an indication as to how far in front James Maggot is. And no disrespect to the Commonwealth silver medalist and the former world junior silver medalist. He is... If if you can call him a weakling, he is the slowest of the four, and we do have that enigma, that huge talent of Asbel Kiprop to anchor the Kenyans home. Good performance so far from Will Lear. Alameu looks quite calm and composed at the moment. It's Collis Birmingham on third leg for the Australians, and what a great renaissance he's had in the last few years. Brilliant eighth place in the World Cross, but he's well isolated in fourth place. Can Maggot keep it going? And are they edging closer and closer, the Kenyans, to another middle distance world record? Well, but, uh, sorry, Peter, go on. Well, let me just give you the first two splits. Cheboy 338.5, Kiplagat 332.4. Well, that was the damage, wasn't it? Yeah. Maggot now just has to hang on. He may not be the best in their team. He's just got to keep this rhythm going at a respectable pace. 
handed over to Asbel Kitrock. Now, this is what I want to see. I want to see what Asbel Kitrock can do if he's got to run hard on his own. Normally, he languishes at the back and languishes around there, trying to maybe just do as little as possible in most races, and then he comes through with that massive stride. If he has to run hard, which you might think he has to do here, because he doesn't really know perhaps what the time is or what the splits have been going on, he might produce something quite sensational on this last leg. It's going to be interesting to see how Kip will get, how he chooses to approach it as well, Kip Rock. Remember, he set that blistering 327 in Monaco last year where he dragged Mo Farah around to a British record. How will he approach the fourth and final leg with a world record in the offing? Maggot just needs to dig in and hang on here. Really good performance from Will Lear because the Kenyan isn't really taking any extra ground out of him. Just to give a check on how Maggot's doing, his last two laps, 57.9 and 59.1. So he's slowing slightly, but that doesn't really mean much, really, because when you're going to hand it over to Leipzig of Asgard, Kiprock, whatever lesser pace this man is performing, Kiprock will make it up. Well, it would be sensational for the Kenyans. Their women produced a world record in this 15-lap event yesterday, and they will go as favourites in the 8-lap event, which immediately follows this. But Maggot will be feeling it now. He is not too far away from handing over the athletes at the traditional start of the 1500 metres, preparing to take over. And good work from Collis Birmingham to close down on Alimeu. Well, we said he had a, uh, a really good season and it's continuing here. Well, he's moving up into third place, the Australian. Good run from him. I think, got a feeling the uh, Ethiopians may have turned up a little bit too late for these championships. They look a bit uh, jaded. But here we go. Asbel Kitrock gets it in his hand. Just look at the style of this man. Those legs now are starting to stretch out. I haven't seen this before. I don't think the world has seen this before. There we go. Collis Birmingham handing over now to uh, his teammate. Well, let's just see the first lap of what Asbel can try and do. If the crowd get him excited, we could see something very special indeed. He knows, I think, he's going to break the world record because he's almost capable of uh, making any deficit up that he has to for that particular record. Beautiful run-up, beautifully smooth. He doesn't even look as if he's running fast, but believe you me, he really is. And Steve, just to give you a check on what his job is, he's certainly well inside schedule, you said. Maggot did his job pretty well, 3.39 lap there. Well, chasing behind is Lionel Mazzano, the uh, Olympic silver medalist. There's uh, Williams of Australia, who's studying in America at the moment. He's in, uh, what is it, third place at the moment, but being shadowed by the Ethiopian. But those long legs are now stretching out down the back straight, 50, eating up the ground. 55 seconds, his first lap. <laughs> He doesn't even look as if he's running that fast. That's the worry with Kitrock. But I think we can safely say this world record is definitely going to go. But just how much he wants to stride out. He's irresistible to watch, Steve. And the question I've got for you, his legs are so thin. He's run 3.27, as Ronald McIntosh has just said. Where does the power come from? Because his legs are tiny. It is. There's Masano. He's got a hard task, hasn't he, trying to catch this man. But... He is a caliber athlete, but you can see now Asbel stretching out even more. I, I saw him after the Olympics. Uh, he didn't run there. He was terribly disappointed not to be able to defend his uh, gold medal. He was injured, and I think uh, to him that was a big deficit, but I think he's coming back in the sort of form that could really make this uh, world sit up and watch what a true talent he is. Well, we're being treated to the elegant style and grace of Asbel Kitrock, fairly gliding around this Brand new Mondo surface. It's almost too relaxing, isn't it? It's almost looking around here, enjoying it as much as we are, really. But uh, there you go. He looks totally, totally effortless. When he looks up into that big screen, it's, out, it's like he's out for a 10-mile Sunday stroll. Well, looking at this now, we just see Mazzano coming into the picture at the top. He's actually stretching away from the Olympic silver medalist. He's making it look easy. Well, there we are, the last lap now, and the Kenyans have totally dominated this race. And what man to bring them home. Asbel Kiprop, twice world champion, past Olympic champion, and he's absolutely devastating this last leg. Those long legs stretching further and further away. The crowd over the back straight are really appreciating this. Behind him, though, Ethiopia, 
and Australia battling out for the second and third places. No, sorry, fourth and third places, but they're a long, long way back. They really are. Just less now than 200 metres to go. And Kenya have done it again. They've dominated these relays over here. And the crowd are going absolutely wild because the announcer is telling them that this man is coming home in a new world record. As Bell Kiplock, the last 50 metres or so, and the legs are even stretching out. The arms are pumping. He wants even more. The arms go up, he waves to the crowd, and there it is, a new world record, 14-22-22. Kenya have been supreme here at these World Relay Championships. Pisano struggling now as Walter comes at him. Pisano is holding on, or is he? The Olympic silver medalist is coming home in second place, but only just as Walter fails to catch him. Drama yet again. Wow. wow. As well, Kip Rock congratulates his friend and mate and teammate Kip Lagat. 3.32 leg for Kip Rock. 3.32 on his own. The conditions are not good here. There's a big, big wind on that back straight. Well, Steve called it over the line, a brand new world record.